Hello everyone. Welcome to Wave Optics and Semiconductor Physics course. So today we are going to discuss about interf uh, interference. So before that, just I want to give a brief introduction. A uh, few more things uh, which are useful to uh, briefly explain about the interference. So that is first one is whenever there is a situation, there there is a medium two mediums separated by an interface when light ray incident on that interface it is there reflected and refracted so what are the reflected ray it changes its phase by either 0 or 90 degree it depends upon the what are the refract indices of these things so if the refract indices of the n2 that means the second one is larger then the phase change occurs by pi radians or 180 degree Otherwise, there is no phase change occurs. So this is the first thing. And next, Snell's law. So as you everyone know about, whenever the light ray incident on an interface, then there is a reflection or uh, refraction will take place. So if the angle of incidence is theta one and the refract indices of the medium one is n one, ang angle of refraction is theta two and uh, the third indices of the second medium is N2, then there is obviously there is a correlation between these things are N1 sin theta 1 is equal to N2 sin theta 2. So this is the one relation. Whenever you see this one, it is like some colors appear on this solar bubble. These colors, if you look at these colors, this side, if you see, left side, if you see this one type of color pattern is there, right side, you see another type of color patterns will there. So different color patterns you can observe by looking at the soap bubbles. And also in compact disc, the compact disc also will show different colors. And if you move a twist or if you change your angle of looking at the uh, compact disc, also there is a change in colors you can observe. The pattern is completely changed. So this is why. So basically this is colors are coming due to interference then how this interference is occurred, why these colors are coming. And also you can see some images like this uh, will show the interference pattern. Like this color patterns will change. And also you, you see peacock feathers where you can see different colors like green, blue, dark blue, sky blue and green mostly these colors. So there is a particular reason to appear these colors and also brown colors. So, and if you see with the different angles, the pattern is always changes. So why this is occurring? So this is, we, we can explain by using interference. Also, the most beautiful thing is butterfly. So in butterfly, the colors and pattern on the butterfly. So that is also, you can change with respect to the angle of looking at the image uh, the butterfly that also you can see so these are all come to uh, because of the interference so and also practically so in laboratory we can see interference so those things are colors in peacock butterfly and as well as uh, so bubble and compared this because of the sunlight sunlight as you know it is has seven colors it is a white radiation all colors are there if you take monochromatic source, only green color light, if you take, so then in practically we can see interference light by thin films, it looks like, like this. And also, if you take yellow color sodium vapor lamp, the interference is like this. So the pattern of interference pattern is bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, alternating bright and dark. Would be appear or in practical laboratory, we can see. So this is what interference about that we see regularly. Then what is the definition for interference? So the definition for interference is always the modification of amplitude. Let's say amplitude and intensity is having the relation so that the modification of amplitude or intensity of light due to superposition of waves. So whenever there is a two or more light waves are getting superposed, then their intensity got modified. That is what is called interference. 
So this interference will have two types. One is constructive interference, another one is destructive. Constructive means so after superposition of this thing, the intensity got increased or raised, or some of the it is equivalent to some of the intensities. That is called constructive. Destructive means it's collapsed. Total intensity becomes zero or decreased. Such uh, uh, interference is called destructive interference. And now you see another example for the interference pattern is like if, on water, if you pour some oil, this oil is spread on the water surface in a thin layer. Whenever it is exposed to sunlight, it appears the different colors like this. So this is also interference pattern. So if you take monochromatic source of light, then it's bands, uh, bright dark, bright dark fan bands will come. If it is uh, monochrome uh, white light, since sunlight is having seven colors, so different colors pattern is coming every other year. So this way is why happening. Okay. So before that, so as you everyone uh, studied in previous classes about Young's double slit experiment. So what Young has observed, whenever there is a white light or a monochromatic source of light if you take then if the monochromatic light or something like sunlight is incident on a single slit one small slit is there which is having the very diameter is in the uh, dimension of millimeters now from this dimension the light uh, coming from this hole it reaches to another two holes if you keep here here also the holes are in millimeter. So then what will happen? One source becomes here again, it is spreads from this hole and also it spreads from the this holes. Okay, whenever it happens like this, what will happen? The lights coming from this source, the light coming from this hole. So these two are getting superposed and produce an interference pattern on the screen. So that is like alternative bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark fingers. So this is what uh, Young's double set experiment. So initially he performed with the sunlight and he appeared that colored pattern is a good. Now, if you replace sunlight with a monochromatic source of light, then you appear bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark pattern. So this is Young's double set experiment. So this we have studied earlier also. And now, so what it is constructive and destructive interference. Constructive interference means the wave one as having the same phase, phase is same, amplitudes A1 square, A2 square, then resultant amplitude is A1 plus A2, so that intensity is A1 plus A2 whole square. For whereas in case of destruct interference, both are in opposite phase, that means it is like A1, it is A2, but it is minus A2. So A1 minus A2 whole square. If A1 is equal to A2, it becomes zero, is here, this intensity becomes zero. This is destructive interference. The same thing we can see here from according to Young double slit experiment, one slit from one slit, one wave is coming and reaching this point here. Another wave it is coming and reaching this point. Whenever it is reaching here, there, if you look at this phase of this one and this one. So from this, we can see it is Lewis to or out of phase. That means 180 degree phase difference is there so that it gives the destructive interference. So the amplitudes are getting sub subtracted. However, in case, in this case, it is like coming and reaching this point with the, which are these two waves which are having the same phase. That means constructive interference is that way. That means amplitudes are, uh, some of the amplitudes is that way. Okay, now, so in order to form interference pattern, what is the conditions that uh, any double slit experiment? So the some conclusions they have drawn and the construction, how this uh, interference pattern occurred. So first and foremost thing is the source should be coherent source. And second one is the slit size should be in millimeter, very, very less. And also the distance between the screen and the two slits. That means source should be large and it is dark enough and also the amp frequencies, the frequency of the light should be same. So those are the main conditions to produce interference patterns. However, in first point, what is the coherence? What do you mean by coherence? Coherence means 
when two or more waves in a fixed and a predictable phase relationship each other is said to be coherent coherence means two waves or two or more waves so when one wave is there another wave is there whenever if you talk about what is the phase relationship between what is the phase difference the phase difference if you take this one phi is equal to phi phi 1 minus phi 2 that should be constant it should be constant and as well as our zero zero phase difference or constant phase difference should be there that is for predictable phase difference then that is called coherence so such sources so those sources produce this type of waves that produce that means one source if you take one tube okay from this light is emitting so whenever the light waves are emitting here if you compare any two light waves so that phase should be between the two light waves should be constant or maybe zero such sources are called coherent sources otherwise those are called incoherent sources example for incoherent sources is sunlight candles normal lamps so coherent sources means basically we cannot produce uh, naturally coherent sources okay so but sun candlelight lamp tube light bulb all these are incoherent sources now the two independent sources for example if you take two bulbs okay they cannot be never ever they are be coherent sources because even though they have same power same wavelength same amplitude same type of bulb for example 100 watt bulbs if you take 200 watt bulbs then 200 watt bulbs cannot be a coherent sources that means two waves are is having the same power same wavelength same amplitude is there but still they are not coherent sources because whenever you the moment you switch on the light the waves produced from the bulbs they cannot maintain the constant phase relationship so for that the, in order to produce coherent sources there are two secondary sources which produce from the secondary sources we can produce a coherent source for example one source is here from this source waves are coming and from this source the two switches are there again two light sources are produced here. again from this one light source is coming and this from the one light source is coming so these two are getting sources these two are derived from the one single source so then these one and two are acts as a coherent source because it is derived from only one source and similarly for example if you take a light ray which is incident on here and here what will happen it is getting transmitted it is getting reflected so this reflection and it transmitted these one and two are derived from this which source this is source from this light source then one and two could be coherent sources yeah but independent sources cannot be coherent sources that is what we have to remember now again coherence coherence are there are two types of coherence are there temporal coherence and spatial coherence what do you mean by temporal coherence so as you know coherence means constant phase relationship should be followed so here the constant phase relationship with respect to time that means every uh, for a particular interval of time then the phase difference is constant those are called temporal coherence so this is about the bandwidth that we say bandwidth of this force if so with respect to time it is non con not constant that means varying does not vary vary but at any two points in between any two points the phase difference the phase relationship is constant then those sources are called spatial coherence that is called spatial coherence so basically temporal coherence spatial coherence temporal means with respect to time the constant phase relation is maintained in particular interval of time spatial means at any in the space at any fixed two points fixed two points always the phase relationship is constant such so uh, are called spatial coherence so this is the differences which we can see uh, temporal coherence we see in microcentric interferometer spatial coherence obviously we can see in n double slit experiment now coming to the picture of types of interference okay anyway how the interferences are classified 
So here the main problem is coherent sources. Coherent sources production is based on the production of coherent sources. The interference pattern, uh, interference are divided into two types. One is division of wavefront. Another one is division of amplitude. So by division, dividing wavefront, if the interference pattern produced, that means that we can observe by the reflection, refraction, uh, unequal distances and form interference. That type of pattern is called uh, division of wavefront. So by division of wavefront, we can achieve the interference of the waves. Okay. So those things we can apply by either reflection, refraction, uh, like this. And similarly, division of amplitude. So instead of wavefront division, a division of amplitude. Amplitudes are varying. So then initially the same amplitude. So and after that, when there is a either reflection or refraction, because of the reflection refraction, amplitude got modified, but having the same constant phase relationship, so that it is coherent sources and produce an interference pattern. So thus is called division of amplitude. So best example, if I say, then you will understand more clearly. So this is one, this is the one you see here. So for example, this light source is here. This is wavefront is coming like this. And here wavefront, this wavefront, primary wavefront divided into two wavefronts, the secondary, so secondary wavefront one, secondary wavefront two. And if these two produce, and these two are meeting at one place and produce interference pattern. This is the best example for the division of wavefront interference. So it is an example is the best example is Eng double shift experiment. So whereas division of uh, amplitude, amplitude means for example light ray of intensity, some intensity is there. It is instant on here. Example, you, you think you think that this is a glass plate. Whenever it incident on a glass plate, what will happen? The light get reflect as well as inside refract. So this light, if you see the intensity of this one and this one, obviously the instant light having the more intensity, it is divided here. Reflected as some, it takes some intensity, it takes some intensity. So if you add these two, then the intensity will be same. For example, the, the amplitude, if you say this is amplitude A, and this amplitude is A1, this amplitude is A2. So we assume there is no other losses are there. Then obviously A is equal to obviously A1 plus A2. The same light light is divided into two light rays. Then again, if there is a glass plate, means it is like a rectangular part. Again, here it is coming. Here again, what will happen? This is reflect and again refracted. And this reflected rate again, it come here. Again, here it is getting reflected and refracted. So then there is a two light rays are coming from the source of the this film, this thin uh, glass. And these two are getting superposed and produce interference pattern. So this pattern is coming. That means this amplitude and this amplitude always it is varying different amplitudes. But these light rays are generated from the this light rays so that these two are coherent sources and produces interference pattern. So this is the best example for the division of amplitudes. So like this, we can divide interference into two types, division of amplitude and division of wavefront. So here examples as I given here, division of wavefront, Eng's double set experiment, Fresnel bypass experiment. And division of amplitude is Newton Eng's experiment, Michelson interferometers, and also thin films. Okay, these are the examples for the types of interference. Now, earlier we discussed about phase difference relation between phase difference to path difference. So, phase difference is equal to pi by lambda into path difference. So, they, if there is a condition because there is a phase change occurred, whenever there is a phase change occurred for construct interference, the phase change should be zero, something like that. And for destruct into phase change, should be opposite phase should be there so that. If you know the phase change, then you can say predict path difference. So the condition for formation of construct interference is path difference should be equal to the L lambda so that there that is the bright fringe or maximum intensity would occur. Here n runs from 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Similarly, for destructive interference, the path difference should be integral multiple of lambda by 2. That means 
if you run n is equal to 0 1 2 3 that means delta is equal to lambda lambda by 2 j lambda by 2. let's say if you substitute here path difference is 0 if you put path difference is 0 after that we put 1 this lambda if we if here you put 2 lambda here 3 you put 3 lambda like this it is coming here if you keep n means it is coming lambda by 2 3 lambda by 2 similarly 5 lambda by 2 like that that means the dark or minimum intensity minimum intensity or dark that means less less intensity is there it is occur only path is equal to lambda by 2 or 3 lambda by 2 5 lambda that is the multiple of lambda by 2 should be there and here construct interference only occurs it is 0 lambda 2 lambda 3 lambda like this it should be so this is about the interference uh, uh, constructive and destructive interference conditions.